stewardship campaign, a campaign. I get all these texts all day long. Would you like to give money to this candidate? Would you like to give money to that candidate? And I delete them and they keep finding my phone number. Uh, and so Randy and I are gonna text you as much as they do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but every campaign has an agenda behind it, doesn't it? Doesn't it? C.S. Lewis writes this in his book, Mere Christianity. Any enemy occupied territory. Enemy occupied territory. That is what the world is. And Christianity is the story of how the rightful king has landed, you might say in disguise, and is calling us to take part in a great campaign of sabotage. And what is our agenda? Love, grace, and truth. Today we're going to talk about being nice to people. Have you heard that from any of the candidates? <laughs> or have they modeled the exact opposite? You see, when you give, you're not just giving. Your, your giving matches what you want in this world. That's what we spend our money on, right? Oh, I don't have $7. We do, and even our family gives. So please give to this great campaign of sabotage. It's hard work out there, isn't it? So this week, Norman Vincent Peale, Reverend Norman Vincent Peale, challenges us to think positively. But his chapter title, How to Get People to Like You, initially caught me off guard. I don't really, that's not my MO. I'm not trying to win friends and influence people. So I thought, what does that have to do with positive thinking, getting everybody to like me? Why should we care if people like us? And how could that possibly help our spiritual and mental health? Uh, but after some reflection, I realized being well-liked often stems from somebody who has a positive mindset. It's about how we present ourselves to the world. It's not about being a people pleaser, but about living in a way that naturally draws people in. And let's face it, most of us want to feel loved, appreciated, and valued. We might not think of it as popularity, but our relationships and how we perceive and how others perceive us do have a deep impact on our lives. So today, let's shift the focus a bit. I'm going through Norman Vincent Peale's book and updating it for a revised edition. So his title is uh, How to Get People to Like You. I was more thinking how to be more affable. So instead of just trying to get people to like us, let's focus on that today. And affable means to be approachable, friendly, and easy to talk to. Affability is more than just seeking approval. It's about cultivating a welcoming and warm presence that can uplift others. And affability can be a powerful force, especially in today's world. Does anybody here want to be well-liked, to have friends, to feel supported, and to find security in those connections? Anybody want that? Okay, I know I do too. And as Christians, if we're aiming to be like Jesus, we can see. Was it, he was pretty popular, right? I mean, we're still talking about the guy. He was approachable. He was open and warm-hearted. Read the Gospels. You'll notice that's a trait of his that the other Pharisees and Sadducees didn't have. But what made him so affable? Listen to one of his most famous messages. I think even non-Christians would know this teaching, and it shows you how affable Jesus is. It says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here, Jesus invites people in. He's offering rest, comfort, and peace. That's the ultimate example of affability. He could take on the weariness of others because he was spiritually grounded. He had his life in order enough so that he could be, in a, place, he could be a place of rest for others. And that brings me to an important truth. Before we can be affable, right? You say, Sean, that sounds good. I want, yeah, I want to be warm and, love, and everybody love me. Sign me up for that. Okay. First, it says, you know, the important thing about that, knowing that, is before we can be a source of warmth and kindness for others, guess who we're going to have to do it for first? 
ourselves. If you're struggling to be at peace with yourself, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be very hard to make others feel peaceful in your presence. You might have people who like you, but if you don't like, your, like yourself, you'll always feel insecure, uh, low, have low self-esteem, and like something's missing. True affability, true affability, comes from an inner contentment and self-care. Not from, I want to get everybody like me so I can network and you know, get into this door. No, it comes from an inner contentment and self-care. There's this amazing team uh, in baseball called the Mets. Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> right now, guess what they are? Pretty popular, right? Very affable. Very affable. Uh, but at the start of the season, I had to walk with shame. I'd walk around like this with my hat on. They weren't playing well. What changed? They started playing together. They started focusing on their positions and promising each other that they would focus on their role only on the team. They got their act together and they began doing their jobs. They stopped listening to the media, they stopped getting distracted, and they hunkered in. Isn't that what God wants from us? To show up, to be our best selves, to put in the effort in our daily lives, whether it's prayer, meditation, or just being a little more present for yourself. To be affable, we need to practice the basics. Read scripture, pray, meditate, take care of your body with rest and exercise. Those political campaigns have made sure that all day long you will hear their messages. So you're going to have to actively seek out the right messages. You're also going to have to take care of your body with rest and exercise. When we're in a good place with ourselves, you naturally become more approachable. We become like Jesus, gentle and humble and able to help and comfort those around us. Gandhi once said, if you want to change the world, begin with yourself. Jesus did that 2,000 years before him. Many of the spiritual practices we are engaged with are meant to be alone. Why are all these practices meant to be alone? Because they help us become comfortable with ourselves, to sit in silence, and to find that inner peace. If you can sit with yourself without restlessness, you will become like the sun. When people walk by you, they'll go, ooh, is it warm out? when you have the peace, when you have that warmth in you. And here's a reality check. Here's the asterisk. Oh, I'm going to be more affable. There's an asterisk next to affable, so you read that and then you follow your, your eye down to the page. Not everybody will like you. <laughs> I've tried very hard to get everybody to like me. I just can't do it. No matter how warm or how kind you are, Jesus told his disciples, he said, go and bring the good news to everyone that you can. And so they went door to door. And his instructions were this, if they invite you in, teach them. If they don't, take your sandals off, dust them off, and move on to the next house. Jesus in scripture says this, behold, I stand at the door and... It's not just literal. Jesus was saying, hey, some people won't uh, welcome you. It's okay. Don't let it bother you too much. Keep, up, keep going. And it's not just Jesus who faced this. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, it says this. This is nobody's favorite passage. I, you know the Hallmark cards? Sometimes I want to put like passages like this in there. Because it says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will be blessed, happy. It says, they will be persecuted. Oh, if we think that living a positive and spiritually healthy life means that everyone is going to welcome you with open arms, you're going to be mistaken there. Sometimes being a person who strives for kindness, positivity, and spiritual growth can actually make other people uncomfortable. You're pointing out something to them that they don't want to see. That's why it's so important that our affability isn't just based on everybody liking us. It must be rooted in who we are, rooted in a sense of peace that comes from God and knowing ourselves. 
Some people loved my positive mindset when I was in the military. Others didn't, and I'd get a hard time about it. Why, would not any, why wouldn't anybody like a positive person? Sometimes we don't like what's missing in us and seeing it in other people. If you've ever found yourself irritated by someone who seems well-liked, take a moment to ask yourself, why don't I like them? Is it something about their positivity that might be missing in you? Being more affable means, means being more aware of what irritates us and learning to let go of those negative emotions. To be more affable is to be more self-aware, more reflective, and more intentional about our interactions with others. If you've noticed, this is all about conscious living, aware living, not letting the world and the distractions of it get to us. Many have talked about this loneliness epidemic. Study shows that despite being more connected than ever through technology, people are increasingly feeling more and more isolated. We crave deeper relationships and a sense of belonging, but many struggle to find it. What's the cure? This is where affability becomes so important. When we cultivate a spirit of approachability and warmth, we create spaces where people can feel seen and heard, helping to address the loneliness that so many are experiencing. You can't pour from an empty cup, can you? Just as Jesus took time for solitude and prayer, we must care for our own spiritual and emotional health so that we can be genuinely connected with others. If you're at peace with yourselves and grounded in God's love, you will become an inviting presence for others, a reminder that they're not alone, that they're valued, and that there is, that there is a community willing to share their burdens. In a world starved for connection, affability can be the powerful antidote to loneliness, both in our lives and the lives of others. So, how do we become more affable? One way is to prepare by encountering the people we're going to meet in the world. Let's admit it. Who drives us the most crazy? Go ahead, you can tell me. Don't say their specific name. But what creature are they? Humans. People. People drive us the most crazy. Whenever I have to do something, I prepare. Preparation helps with surprises and gives you some comfort in what you'll be doing. It should be the same in our relationships. Is it easy to be affable? No, not always. And so one way we can build affability into our lives is by picturing people we're going to meet throughout the day in our prayer and meditation. You'll find this is very easy with people you like. Sometimes I just think about my wife and kids and I pray for them, which does what? It builds a certain excitement in me. I'm thinking of them, hoping for them, which makes me happy when I see them, when we're apart. What if I did that for everybody I met? What if I looked at my calendar and I said, I'll be meeting these three people today, two of whom I love and one who I hope doesn't show up? <laughs> if I just went into that situation unprepared, I might be dreading it all day. You ever have that feeling? Ugh. What if I visualized each person I was going to meet and thought a kind thought towards them? I didn't learn that in school. What if I prayed for them? I'd be training my mind to look beyond the negatives, to see the whole person, not just the aspects that annoy me. It's a way to adjust your attitude before going into a situation instead of just reacting when you're there. I like to people watch. I've noticed, however, that when I do that, I often see all the negative things. Like, I really don't like those people up, up at that parking lot who back into their parking spots. I'm sorry, I, I, know, I know some of you are, are those people. It takes the same amount of time, okay? <laughs> when I think of the shopping center, all I can think about is how annoying the parking's going to be. That's my first thought. I could be hungry and I'll just drive by. I don't care because I don't want to go park. Where's my attention? On the negative. Not on the fact that there's all these shops that I have complete access to if I find one parking spot. You know, I, my, I'm not focused on, 
I might see a friend there. I always see people at the shopping center when I go there. If, imagine I focused on that. If I focused instead on the blessings, wow, look what I have access to if I just find one parking spot. Thanks for backing into your spot. <laughs> if you want to be more affable, you just change your perspective. That's as easy as going like this with a mirror. That's it. It's negative leaning. Just go like this. Positive. And then your attitude will reflect it. Affability also means saying what's on your mind when it's good stuff. One night I was eating dinner and I thought, this is really good. The chef, who was my wife, was sitting right next to me, but I didn't say anything. And then I thought, just say what you said. Say what you thought in your head. For some reason, I didn't want to. <laughs> I said, why is this so hard to give a compliment? <laughs> And I, and I said, I don't want to be sappy. Maybe I just didn't want to be nice in that moment. You know, maybe that comes off as being weak in some way. But I reached down and I grabbed it and I wrestled. I said, get out of here. I said, this is really good. <laughs> Suddenly my wife smiled. That small moment reminded me of the power of a simple, sincere compliment. Sometimes it's hard to be nice. Maybe nobody's nice to you, but let's not wait for others to start. Let's be the one to start. And that's the thing. If the world is a complaint center, we have the chance to be a compliment center. It doesn't take much. Notice the person who holds the door open for you, the one who bags your groceries, the waiter, your neighbor, or the UPS driver who's always late, but you can still focus on the positive. It could be anyone. Just notice them. And then let that word slip out. Let that phrase, thanks for doing that. Hey, I appreciate you. Or watch this one. If you say this, you better come back and thank me. Wow, you're great at what you do. Say that to people, wherever you, they are. These simple affirmations, when, next time they see you, it's gonna be, they're going to have to wear sunglasses to look at you. Being affable is a lot like making a cup of coffee, and I'm going to conclude here. Here's my parable for the day. Step one, before you make a good cup of coffee, you need the right beans. That's the inner self. Don't worry about the outer self. It's already, it's already consuming as much as it, it can. The real beans you need to focus on for this kind of coffee are the inner beans, your inner self. You got to take care of the, that self, nourish it, it needs rest, it needs prayer, it needs self-reflection. You can't brew a good cup of coffee if the beans are stale. Step two, you need some water. That's the living water. Jesus offers it, and we receive it through scripture and spiritual practice. So you're the beans, the inner beans. The word of God, this practice, prayer, meditation, is the water you pour over it. Step three, you're going to have to let it cook. You've got to let it brew. This is your preparation time. Thinking about all the people you're going to meet. Praying for them and setting your mind on kindness. And finally, step four. Serve it up. Serve it up. Pour out that warmth and friendliness to others. Share a compliment and be a breath of fresh air in a world that's parched for connection. Now, if you've ever made a cup of coffee in the morning and you feel that's what keeps you from turning into a grump, you get what I mean. So just like that morning coffee, a little effort to be affable can keep you and those around you from starting the day off on the wrong foot. And when the, when, the, when the day gets tough, remember, you can just go back to the coffee machine for a refill. Go back to prayer, not the literal coffee machine. <laughs> go back to prayer. Take a moment to, for yourself and recharge. Affability won't solve all your problems, but it sure will make the world a little bit of a kinder and better place. So my friends, can we try to live in that spirit this week? To be approachable, to be kind, and be aware of the power you have to lift up somebody, whether it's just with a word or a gesture. Who knows? You might make a new friend. Or at least you might make somebody's day a little better. And if all else fails, smile. Bob always tells me to smile when I'm golfing. Smile. 
It's the universal language of affability. And it doesn't cost a thing. So let's be like Jesus and let's be that perf perfect cup of coffee in the morning, warm, comforting, and ready to wake up the world with a little bit of kindness.